Thank you for the invitation and it is a real honor and a pleasure for me to speak uh, to um, on, on this platform and to this audience. So um, I'm based at the University of Western Cape um, in Cape Town, South Africa. And um, I'm at the Institute for Poverty, uh, Land and Agrarian Studies. And my work uh, and my presentation for today is mainly going to be on the concept of blue justice for uh, small scale uh, fisheries. Um, I'm going to take, uh, I've got three concepts that I just want to touch on. And um, this is in, uh, uh, the Blue Revolution, uh, Blue Economy Acceleration, and Blue Justice. So as a form of introduction, uh, when we're talking about the Blue Revolution, we can go um, a, a couple of hundred of years ago, 400 years plus, we talked about the exploration um, of the oceans, we're talking about the exploration in terms of um, for for military. We're talking about um, also colonialism uh, for religious purposes and and eco economy. So the blue revolution has started a very long time ago, and all of us are in different places in the world because of this uh, blue uh, uh, revolution. And it has different relationships uh, and meanings to, to people and especially coastal people. So the impacts of the, these changes has impacted them directly based on the historical um, background of, of ocean exploration and um and also and also colonialism uh if we fast track to um today we're talking about the blue economy and when we're talking about the blue economy in uh, 2023 we're talking about the blue economy in ocean exploration around two things. The first thing is for oil and gas exploration. And around the coast of Africa, particularly a key point for many states, many states on the continent are saying that this is the moment where we want to do development that um, in, a, in a very African uh, way and we want to own the development and we want to be part of the exploration um, and oil and, and use all of that benefits of oil and gas exploration, mining, seabed mining, phosphate is, is very popular. But also, on the other hand, um, Africa is also a key part of um, tourism and especially adventure tourism and, um, and high-end tourism. So the blue economy also bring a lot of tourism uh, as part of that. When you're talking about food, the blue economy is particularly talking about um, how we relate to uh, um, the, the ocean uh, food and what we consume, but also the expansion of aquaculture and how aquaculture is being expanding. Related to this is the whole issue of um, to what extent do we then speak about um, protecting the oceans? So we're talking about ocean protection, um, marine protected areas. Um, and this means that we are enclosing uh, the ocean. And in many cases, these areas are where small scale fishing and coastal communities reside and make their livelihood. And often a consequence is eviction. So the blue economy carries two lenses. The one is this need for um, economic development via oil and gas. And on the other hand, the blue economy is strongly linked with the sustainable development goals that looks at the um, 
protection of uh, an enclosed area uh, together with tourism. Both these aspects, I'm going to touch on the concept of blue justice, and how the concept of blue justice evolved and why I particularly call it blue justice and why it's important for us to look at the issue of blue justice and small scale fisheries. Um, on the continent and also um, around the world. So for me, it all started in uh, in uh, '99 uh, uh, when we when we started our um, our policy process, the fisheries policy process, and democracy in South Africa. And the democracy in South Africa was fairly rooted in. Um, in uh, this is the time where people who have been dispossessed, marginalized, um, will be able to gather the benefits of the ocean, the rights, the access. So there was a strong drafting of small scale fisheries policy, and small scale people were involved in drafting that policy. But in the background of South Africa, it was a strong commercial uh, fishing companies that were promoted by the apartheid state. And people who are uh, coastal communities were only working for in. Um, working for these companies and did not have their access rights. The democracy always also um, had to battle with, do we provide the jobs for the workers that are in the factory or do we provide uh, or do we provide access and resilience and uh, resources to coastal communities that have been marginalized? The government took the route to actually support fishing companies instead of fishing communities. So the issues of marginalization, of uh, exclusion, of access rights, almost this group of people were overlooked. But because it um, happened overnight, those kind of anti-apartheid movements, and I must say, the church played a key role in supporting a lot of these inequalities. On the one hand, certain churches and other churches basically um, supported the apartheid state, but 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 the church played a role in 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 kind of leading some of the debates in the apartheid movement. So part of that was how to get noticed. And that was mainly by a protest, how to be organized and how to organize in different was, was, was very important, um, come back from that history. And also that you also have to have a seat at ne the negotiation table. So much so that the small scale fisheries people drafted their own policy. They also fed into international legislation of the governance of the tenure, for land, fisheries, and forest, and that played a key role in securing food security. The other uh, document that they also played a key role in is the voluntary guidelines for securing sustainable small-scale fisheries. And this is also in the background of food security, because when you look at small-scale fish fisheries, they just don't need a right to a livelihood and right to be recognized, but they also need a right to food security. While they catch the food, they don't necessarily consume the food. And I hope some of these discussions will happen as we, um, as the other speakers bring in um, the need for small scale fishers to be able not only to catch the food, but also to eat the food. So this was the big case that the small scale fisher people in South Africa rooted in social justice claim that we need a right to livelihood, we need a right to food, and we need a right to practice, and we need uh, to, to be recognized. And, and the slogans were 
and marches were, were leading about fishes' rights or human rights. And the social justice movement was strongly rooted in that uh, um, uh, human rights uh, for, for small-scale fisheries. Um, so when small-scale fisheries were often informal, they were also seen as illegal and they were also seen as poachers. Uh, um, and I have to say that the this, this system in uh, uh, South Africa was also uh, dominated by, um, by male and very few women were, were part of, of the system. So the, the shift from an anti-privatization, anti-apartheid anti, uh, movement quickly shift post-apartheid to anti-privatization movement. And this movement was mainly to kind of root uh, the social justice uh, for, for small-scale fisheries. A key organizations were Massif and DC Development Trust and also certain academics were forming part of this movement all to, to go against and, and not only organized in, um, in South Africa, but also around the continent and also around the world. I must say that organizing on the continent has been very, very difficult. Um, and maybe we can talk about that later. So when we're talking about small-scale fisheries, we're talking about its multi-gear, its multi-species. The inshore areas around the continent is about 33,000 kilometers that we have around of coastline. And 60% is uh, part of, of, of small scale as for the African production. 100% that is caught by small scale fisheries is consumed. And that is, that is, a, that is an important statistic. It is also important that women play a critical role in the processing, the salting and the drying, and it provides significant employment. Uh, around 10 million rely on small scale fisheries on the continent uh, for, for primary livelihood and 200 million just in terms of protein. So small scale fisheries on the continent coastal is very significant, but let us also not forget about the Great Lakes and the importance of inland fisheries to uh, that is also small scale um, uh, that is important. So uh, uh, we, um, I've spoke about the right to be recognized from the South African context, the right to a livelihood and the right to nutrition and food was key principles, key rights for small scale fishes uh, in South Africa. And it is these concepts for me that in that, that the concept of blue justice evolved and the concept of blue justice came from. So it is a concept that is uh, rooted in the South African struggles. It's rooted in social justice and it's rooted in the right to nutrition and, and, and food. We also seen around uh, why justice is such an important concept to understand is that we've seen around the world that we um, look at nature without people. So there's the resurgence of preserving nature without people. And this is based on the extinction crisis that the planet is facing. And we have to, and, and, and the way nature is doing, um, is preserving uh, nature without people is highly problematic on the continent. In many cases, livelihoods that women used to collect resources inside park areas or intertidal zones are now proclaimed protected areas and they are not allowed to do that. And when they do that, their livelihoods are being criminalized. And this is happening in Tanzania and Mozambique and South Africa and in different parts of the continent where livelihoods are suddenly being criminalized in the name of protecting nature. 
So it is also important that when we talk about these issues, we need to also talk about the blue and spatial politics that small scale fishers are seen as surplus people. And especially a new concept that I'm linking to is this, that of convivial conservation. So we're talking about blue justice, but we're also talking about spatial justices, and we're talking about for communities in and around protected areas. But the only way we can look at a justice lens is that we have to look at the injustices of the system and injustices that are against a group of people like small scale fishers. So we're looking at this alienation of special injustices, uneven democracy, alienated human nature uh, relationships, inequality, uh, fortress conservation, and rich biodiversity. So these are all the, the, the kind of other issues that are facing small scale fisheries and our communities on our continent that create this uh, situation that, that we're in. And it is very important that we need to understand these concepts. We need to critically engage with these concepts that, that, are, um, that are creating these different landscapes that we are living in. Recently in South Africa, there has also been um, a number of protests against the seismic surveys that are happening. And here you can see the marine mm -hmm. spatial planning where big uh, corporations like Shell and Searcher, which represent a number of other oil big companies around the world, were planned to blast the marine life along the South African wild coast and west coast. And activists and ordinary citizens kind of pulled together to put a stop to it. But the judge that had oversight of these cases basically stated that it is so important that we need to protect these, the impacts of oil and gas exploration on the livelihoods of small scale fishes and also ocean conservation. So there are pointers and there are many examples where ocean conservation and small scale fish livelihoods definitely complement each other. But there are many cases when it comes to marine protected areas and how it's been done, it alienate and exclude uh, small scale fishes. And um, uh, uh, so, so all of this brings me to what then is blue justice for small scale fishes. And it, and it covers the following. We're looking at providing counter narratives to the conservation and blue economy, looking at what is the social and economic justice, to what extent there's accumulation via conservation, that conservation is also using the same principle as capitalism that 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 looks at tourism and high-end tourism and and in these cases they do not want to see poor people and poor people's livelihoods so they are excluded from uh, creating paradises for the wealthy and the super rich to come and play on the continent based on people's livelihoods and this is mainly in elite and adventure tourism, hotel development, and this often results in conflict and criminalizing of uh, fisher livelihoods. In many cases, in and around uh, protected areas, it's been highly securitized and militarized, and shootings and killings of park officials against small scale mm -hmm. fisher livelihoods and also communities in and around living uh, um, around these parks. So poaching for small scale fishers 
has been seen with illegal fishing has often been seen through apartheid as a form of protest. But that has also become a form of criminalized livelihoods because now we are living in 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 the system and the mm. system is not providing us our livelihoods. So morally people are also going against what what their own livelihoods used to be and become more part of the illegal fishing um syndicates and 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 crime that are, are linked to that. It is it is important that we really need to not only look at the 30 by 30 uh, proclamation by by 2030 without without engaging the impacts and to what extent this will impact on small scale fishes and livelihoods. A marine spatial planning is mm -hmm. also being seen as another form of an apartheid spatial planning that 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 gives preference to oil and, and uh, protected areas, but not to communities. Indirectly and directly, this is also part of access to land and marine resources. Uh, that that blue justice why it's important to look at at Blue Justice. So uh, uh, since 2018, there has been a revival of, um, of scholarship on, on Blue Justice. And um, this is when I brought the concept to um, this forum to Big to Ignore and the World Fisheries Congress in Thailand. And, and this part of that was one of the outcomes of, of this book that had been released mm -hmm. in last year. There's been a Wikipedia entry, so more and more scholarship is coming on justice, equity, food, and gender. And they are also more of um, a, a really more critical movement are saying what the oil and the gas companies are doing is basically grabbing the ocean for their own benefit and so to nature. So what we need to kind of look at, how do we, when we look at, at, at reflecting, because we can't just remain in the theoretical spaces of thinking about it, uh, how concepts are evolve, but also what then is is um, how do we then come up with what is the the solution? And part of that is to transform the economy and redistribute wealth. And that, in essence, we know we need to restructure in order to balance the alignment between human needs and, and with those of the rest of life. We need to rethink and disaggregate the idea of economic growth while distributing wealth that we already have more equally. I've always questioned whether we need to be really more efficient and more effective and to what extent that they drive up efficiency and effectiveness is to the detriment to our, our planet, our oceans and our livelihoods. So it is important when we think about 30 by 30, that some of the larger wild areas um, would be, some of the wild areas would be necessary for biodiversity, but biodiversity cannot just be on the African continent. It cannot just be the responsibility of small scale fishes. It also needs to go across different sectors. And what about urban conservation? What about creating more spaces that are, are greener and, um, and more, more conducive uh, for people to live in? So I think it is important that we also create a form where we, 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 we have to start when we have to look at the blue economy, we also have to transform and disrupt the economy, but also disrupt how wealth has been distributed um, around the world. Thank you very much.